think this is a question where many of you are going to go to Desmos because you just kind of see something to plug in and you're kind of worried about circles. You don't feel comfortable. And so you're going to start doing that. And you could, and you could play with the slider for R and just kind of figure out what it is until something works. But I think that that's very time consuming. There are actually two ways to get this that are much easier. One of them is just draw a picture, right? Let's draw our little, you know, XY plane here. We have a circle kind of in the first quadrant where two, four, so that's here, and 214 right above it are both parts of this diameter, right? We're trying to find the R, which they don't explicitly say, but that's the radius, right? We should know the, the circle formula enough that we can we can do that and just kind of see the R is the radius, plus it's R, right? So uh, what's the radius? Well, the diameter is 10, right? How did we get from four to 14? We increased it by 10. So what's the radius? Well, half of that is the radius, so that's five and five. So there you go, the radius is five, done simple picture, right? Yes, you can do Desmos and have Desmos do it. But like, I don't know, like you have a pencil and paper and sometimes just doing it that way is much easier and faster and not, it doesn't involve some sort of complicated slider and weird equations. Just, just let the picture talk for you. Now, the other way to do it is uh, much more strategically. Let's just plug points into equations. We have points, we have an equation and remember that the way the circle equation works, the X and Y are giving us points that are all on the outside edge, the circumference of the circle. So uh, they're not giving us points inside. The center is built into the equation, but remember that's not the X and the Y. If you plug the center point into the X's and Y's, you will just get zero. And that's just because the circle is giving us the outside edge. So if we have any endpoints of a diameter, of a radius, whatever, then we're good to go. That's what we want. So let's just plug in the simpler point, 2, 4. So we're going to have 2 minus 2 squared plus 4 minus 9 squared equals r squared. So 2 minus 2 squared is 0, so this whole thing goes away. Uh, so there we go. And 4 minus 9 is negative 5 squared. Now, some of you might be tempted at that point to put in negative 5 as your answer. But uh, remember, we can't have a negative... Um, radius. That doesn't make any sense. It has to be a positive number. It's a distance. So 25 is equal to, uh, oh, I wrote five already. Look at that. I already anticipated the answer. So this is going to be 25 is r squared. Uh, and so now take the square root. And some of you, uh, you know, are like, oh, but it could be positive or negative because of the square root. But again, no, just remember it's a radius. It's a distance. So it's, it's always got to be positive. And, and that's what it is. Plus it says R is a positive constant. So even if you thought maybe the negative could work, just read the freaking question and it tells you not. Um, so I would definitely do either of those. Uh, honestly, I would probably have done the plug points into equations just because that's where my brain always is. I'm always looking out for points and equations. And if I have them, I just kind of go right into it. But I do think that drawing the picture is faster. Um, I just, you know, I'm on robot brain and sometimes robot brain is good. But I think the problem for many of you is your robot brain runs the Desmos program too much. And it's a great tool, but I do think it sucks up time in many places where just doing it in a much simpler way will be faster. And, and I, I think you gotta know this equation well enough that yeah, you feel comfortable doing it without Desmos.